What's going on everyone? My name is Jared and today, not unlike any other video that I've been doing lately, um, we're talking actually about why to buy a carrier branded phone and not an unlocked one. So if any of you watch my channel regularly, you'll know that I am a big proprietor, a big uh, advocate for unlocked phones. And I say that for a couple reasons. Generally speaking, you get quicker updates, you're not tied into any carrier whatsoever, more options in general, and a lot of times you just have more control over your device, whether that is rooting and unlocking, or if that is you know, deep loading, ROM support, developer support, all of that stuff, as well as a lot of phones are only in unlocked versions, like Huawei phones or Xiaomi or things like that. For us here in the US, um, we can't get those phones on a carrier plan. Now, I understand the need for carrier plans and for financing on a carrier plan. It allows a lot of people to get phones that are very costly at an affordable rate. And I think that's fantastic. I think it's great to have that financing as well as all the deals that carriers will do. Buy one, get one via bill credits, uh, you know, get money back. Uh, they'll drop prices all the time. So from a monetary standpoint, carrier phones make a whole lot of sense. They generally are cheaper. Like I said, you get the deals, and say if you and, a, and another person are looking to get a phone at the same time, a lot of times, like right now I know for example, it's buy one get one free on LG G7s at T-Mobile. So, and that's a great deal. As well as even the new Note 9, uh, they are giving I think a few hundred dollars off. So all of that is super, super great for a consumer, which isn't looking to drop a thousand dollars on the Note or the iPhone 10 or whatever. but. With carrier phones, you have a couple things. You're locked into the carrier, like I mentioned in the beginning. You usually get a lot of carrier bloat, so those are usually apps that you don't use. Uh, things like, I know Verizon and at t probably have the most carrier bloat out of the big four here in the US. Uh, they have things like their own messenger app for Verizon, their own GPS, VZ Navigator, um, a whole bunch of stuff that you really just don't need, and a lot of times you can disable it on Android, but you can't get rid of it unless you say you do have a Samsung phone and you use like a system uh, package remover or if you root the phone and get rid of it that way. So it's hard, you lose valuable space, space that you could be using for whatever else you want. Um, and generally speaking, updates are slower because what has to happen, at least before, now that Project Treble is kind of in full swing, things are a little different, but still generally what would have to happen is uh, Google will get their update and push it out to manufacturers. So say, we'll use Samsung. They push it to Samsung. Samsung puts their updates and their junk in it, and then it pushes it to each carrier, and then the carriers go from there, update with their stuff, and push to your phone. So that is a process that takes a long time. Uh, generally speaking, unlocked models, all you have to wait for is the manufacturer. So Sony, Huawei, Google, whatever. With there being two real exceptions to that model, uh, Google Pixel and iPhone. So iPhone, regardless if you buy it on carrier or not, you're getting your update straight from Apple, no carrier interference. That's good. And Pixel, with its only carrier deal being Verizon, uh, you still get updates a day, maybe a, two days later than when Google pushes them out, but most of the time they are the same day. Sometimes they do stage rollouts, so you might not get it right when they announce an update, but you get it very quickly. So again, that's a win. Then you have the odd cases of unlock models where generally speaking, they should take first priority because they'll be the easiest to update, but they aren't. And I made a whole video about this with Samsung specifically um, a few weeks ago saying how the updates for unlocked phones are just completely neglected, completely. You get four updates a year, maybe. So you have quarterly updates and in a world of ever-evolving security issues, sometimes that's just not good for some people. Now, if you're just getting normal security updates, your monthly update really is not a make or break thing. Uh, generally, those updates don't involve big differences, but they might, they might have some features added. But most of the time, no. Your monthly Google update is just that, your monthly Google update. So, 
looking at it now, so I have right here is the T-Mobile S9 Plus, and my girlfriend has the unlocked S9 Plus, and I've actually used the unlock, and I've, I've had the unlock S9 Plus. The only reason for getting this was because of the deal. So, and I was surprised to see that I actually just today, or I just checked today at least, I have the latest August update patch from Google uh, for my S9 Plus. My girlfriend, for example, has the June update for her S9 Plus, and it is well into middle of August going on September. Um, that's just not right. That's not right from a company, from any sort of perspective. Carriers have been getting a lot better with their updates, I will say that, especially for all their, all their phones regardless. It is unacceptable to have an unlocked phone be behind in updates than its carrier branded brethren just because it's less steps. It shouldn't take that much. So I generally, again, would say that I'm not a big fan of carrier branded phones. I'm not because you're locked in. You have, you know, their splash screens and just little annoyances that you can't get rid of on a day to day basis. Like one of the things this is super, super petty. Uh, the 4G icon looks weird on the T-Mobile version than on the normal one. Just looks weird. And I know I could flash this in Odin and make this basically an unlocked model, but I want the update. That's the point. I want it to be latest and greatest. If there is a bug fix or security issue or whatever, I want that update versus I can deal with some annoyances. And going out on a limb and I guess an advocate for T-Mobile right now is I would have to say that their carrier branded phone is a lot less intrusive than AT&T and Verizon, which I've had in the past. And I can't say for Sprint, because I've never had and never have been a Sprint customer, but I will say that both AT&T and Verizon have way more bloatware pre-installed on the device than this one did. So right off the bat, this had the T-Mobile account app, your T-Mobile visual voicemail, the unlock uh, to unlock your phone app, and they had the caller ID, uh, their caller ID feature that you have to pay for. Those are the apps that I saw right off the rip that made this phone different than unlocked. Other than that, there was not much of any difference besides the little T-Mobile jingle when you turned your phone on, as well as a few icon differences in like RTTS calls, which is real-time text calls, which I've never tried, but that's kind of cool. I guess if I had another T-Mobile friend that had this phone, you could text while calling or translate while calling. I really don't know. I didn't look into it any more than <laughs> just the name. Um, so it really isn't that bad. And if I did want to get rid of those apps, I could use Samsung system app disabler and disable, get rid of them pretty much completely uh, without reflashing firmware. So there's that. So for once, I'm advocating, if you're looking right now, especially with the Note coming out, the S9 and S9 Plus still being great devices, and even things like LG's G7, uh, devices like that, the big name Android phones right now, uh, if you're looking to get them, and I, again, especially Samsung, if you're really looking at Samsung, you might actually be better going on carrier. And I say that if you're worried about updates, if you're worried about support. Um, luckily, I haven't really needed to reach out to Samsung support on my unlocked devices, but you just have another point of contact if you do go with the carrier. Uh, this is usually completely against what I would normally say. I'd say, screw the carrier. Um, I don't want to be that involved with you because of the plans, because of the pricing, because of everything. But for once, I really feel good about having the carrier branded phone. It may just be me, but I haven't really had any sort of annoyance. Uh, the apps, like I said, are basically gone off of this phone. I have kept three T-Mobile apps. I kept T-Mobile Tuesday because they give away stuff, the normal T-Mobile account app to check my bill, and visual voicemail because I would have installed that anyway. It's nice having a transcribed or almost transcribed voicemail and to see them in a list form rather than just checking your voicemail. Uh, it's just that much nicer. So out of, I think, the five apps that were on here to start, I actually used three of them. So two of them, the device unlock app, which once you use it, you don't need it and the spam ID protection, whatever. I don't use, I don't pay for that, so I just get rid of that completely. So with that said, um, it's a first for me to advocate for carriers, but it's definitely, there's a needed space. I understand the point of having your EIP plans, 
and the finance plans and you can't beat the deals when they give you buy one get one free get a headphones get a discount get bill credits that's great that's awesome and i think more carriers should do that to entice customers granted they should do it equally but of course you know companies marketing all of that stuff goes into it so you're never going to have the same deals everywhere but again for example i did pre-order the note notes coming this week probably thursday or friday and i got unlocked right from samsung and i will guarantee you that the carrier models will be updated every month and mine will not i'll be waiting until well into the fall to get my first update i am sure unless they release a uh, a patch update for something that they missed before the actual release of the note. So I'm not looking forward to the update schedule for that. Um, I guess hindsight, I could have ordered it from T-Mobile, but again, in my heart of hearts, I still would rather have an unlocked phone, just say in case I decide to leave T-Mobile or go to another carrier or whatever the case may be, I can bring that with me. It's an asset. Having it unlocked is a value as far as resale is concerned. If not, like it was pretty easy for T-Mobile to unlock my device. I didn't have it on my account for a week. I went into the uh, unlocked app. I hit request, bing, bang, boom. Took like 30 seconds and it was done. It was unlocked, restarted. And now basically the only thing that is T-Mobile about this phone is where it came from. And if I really wanted to uh, unlock it, uh, make it the Samsung model, I would just have to flash Odin and then I'd be done. The splash screen would be gone, everything would be gone, and I would more or less have an unlocked model Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. XDA is where you want to go if you want to tinker with stuff like that. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Um, again, this was out of my normal to talk highly of carrier branded things. I really don't like it. Let me know down below if you'd rather have an unlocked device right from the manufacturer or a carrier branded device. And let me know why, is it the money? Is it the ease of going to your store if you have an issue? Or is it just just what you'd rather do? So let me know down below, I would love to hear it. Um, thanks again for watching everybody. I know the past couple weeks the content has been so-so. It's been hard for me also um, going through a dry spell of new and fresh ideas as far as products trying to plan my products wisely versus just willy-nilly going about it. So I kind of did a clearing house sort of thing, got rid of a whole bunch of stuff that I had purchased, not just for the channel, but for myself, and getting rid of that to help me continue on into the future, into the fall, and have some really good stuff coming up soon. So this week you can look forward to probably the note. That won't be this week, that'll be next week's Tuesday video, I am sure of that. So, uh, can't wait to see that. 